The Aqua Changer 240 from LEPA is designed to complement your CPU overclocks with superior thermal dissipation and performance. Dual convex blades on the 120mm fans deliver high volume airflow at low noise, and the protrusive copper plate deploys more coolant for efficient CPU hotspot elimination. Click the link in the description to find out more. What's up guys, today I am super excited because after a year-long hiatus, I am finally rolling out the next episode of my reality web series that most of you know as System Config. Now for those of you unfamiliar, each episode of the show follows a different client in need of a new system. Whether it's a soccer mom with an aging laptop, or a gamer who's looking for more frames per second, I assess their specific needs and budget before assembling the perfect PC solution that's right for them. Today you're about to embark on episode 4, which revolves around a student whose current gaming rig has the horsepower of a cashew. If by chance you haven't seen the first three episodes of the series, they're really great, I've put links in the video description. And even one year later, these are still some of the videos that I am most proud of on the channel, and I know many of you guys feel just as strongly because I've heard the shrill cries in the comments, anxiously awaiting the day when the series will be brought back. Well everyone, today is that day. So without keeping you guys waiting any longer, here's the next installment of System Config. I'm Brent, and I'm here because I need a new gaming computer. I bought my computer, uh, actually I bought it from Newegg, it was like a pre-packaged uh, kind of thing. Pretty much played WoW, or World of Warcraft on it, and that's like about all I did on that computer. I started to play WoW on like, the computer again. So um, depending on where, I, you know, like what I was doing in the game, it would occasionally pause, maybe like hold up for like a half a second to a second. Just, it was very noticeable and actually really annoying. I want to be able to play the games that I like, which are League of Legends and World of Warcraft. I also am looking to use it for video editing um, because I'm a film major I, and I've never actually had my own editing system in my house before, so that's going to be a nice change. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fairly confident based on my uh, experience. I watched um, a couple of the episodes of System Config and Kyle seems like he's got a pretty good grasp on how to get you what you want for the price you want. So I'm hoping you do that for me as well. All right, man, so we've got your old system here and I'm really excited that you actually have an old desktop and not a laptop because it's a lot easier to like kind of crack it open, look inside and we can exactly see where we're coming from. Um, but this is a, a CyberPower PC as it says right there. And so this was a pre-built system as you had mentioned before. Uh, everything in here kind of already came built together as one, but there were a couple issues with it. Uh, one of which was the power supply, which you said had kind of fried and fizzled out after a couple of years of use. Um, as well as, I believe there's a video card that is no longer uh, in yeah. this one. The one that it originally came with is My not friend gave either. me a video card. I'm pretty sure it was an upgrade, but... Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so first off, you've got a pretty nice little gaming case here. It was pretty pretty sweet, I'm sure. Kept it in moderately good shape. Um, there were some scuffs and whatnot, it's but that's probably shape. just some, some wear and tear. <laughs> uh, you got two USB 2s on the bottom there. And this, I think you bought this when? 2008, 2009, probably. 2009. Okay, so we're looking at potentially a seven-year-old system. Six or seven years old. Uh, so why don't we take it over here. Uh, by the way, very limited ventilation on the front here. Um, you probably only got one of these on each side. So you do have some ventilation on the side panel as well. You got a mounting point for an 80 millimeter fan, just some extra ventilation here where your video card would sit. And on the back, you take a look at the, the rear IO. Yeah, so definitely this is uh, not the stock power supply. This looks much uh, higher quality. Um, I can just already tell from the back. Uh, you've got some old school PS2 ports, all USB 2.0, and here we can see uh, a hint at what kind of video card you have in here. It's definitely a, uh, an AMD card, it's a XFX, and you've got an HDMI port and dual link DVI and D sub and stuff. Nice little red fan. Let's crack this thing open and take a look inside to see what we got here. Oh, okay. Definitely, uh, I called it on the power supply. It's Corsair GS600, which is which is good. This is 80 plus certified, and I'm sure that the original power supply that came with this was not 80 plus certified. And that, yeah, that I don't even remember. Generally, generally speaking, when companies like CyberPower or, or similar companies like that build these um, pre-assembled rigs, generally the way they make their margin or the, the way they cut corners is by uh, the power supply. They they usually skimp out on the power supply. Um, it's it's usually a really you know low end model that's not exactly the safest or um, up, up to code as far as efficiency. Uh, as far as the CPU goes, I think this is a, I looked up some basic information on this system before uh, you came over, and it's a it's a core, it's an Intel Core, M, uh, core M2, um, which is a quad-core processor. 
It's LGA 775, and I mean quad core. I mean you you could still probably run some games, um, or or even convert it. You know maybe build a new system with it. Uh, you've got I believe this is eight. No, this is four gigs of RAM, right? Two gig sticks, and this is DDR2. So uh, we're talking like way last generation. Um, probably not the fastest RAM that you could find on the market these days but that's okay. Uh, generally speaking, about eight gigs is like the new standard. It's like the new norm for a gaming PC. And then this is the video card. Now this is, I know, I know the original card in here was a, was a 9500 GT from, from NVIDIA. Um, but what happened with that? Did, you, did it fry or did you just say like, I had a better option and I swapped it out? Uh, like a friend of mine bought a new one. Okay. And so I think, I'm pretty sure he just gave me this. It was like a hand-me-down from your yeah. friend. But nonetheless, I think it is an HD 6770. So it's an HD 6770. Which is, um, you know, better than better than your 9500 GT, that's for yeah. sure. And I think you also mentioned something about this fan in the back dying as well, right? Yeah, I don't know when that happened. Uh, this one right here. I can't remember the last time it works. It, it's it's good that we're moving on to a new system because yeah. with this fan dead um, and and such limited ventilation on the front of this case, and I, I don't think there's any fan at the front here either. So you really have no intake or exhaust fan in this case that's functioning properly at the, at the moment. So I'm um, really glad that we're going to get that all fixed up for you. But does this thing still work? I mean, it still works, yeah, right? Yeah. It still runs? All right, so why don't we try plugging it in and uh, you have some games installed on here? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's let's try to run some games. I'm, I'm very curious to see how we do. All right, man. So we have your system all hooked up now. It's connected to this monitor right here. We've got some peripherals going. Uh, so why don't we just turn this thing on and uh, basically, first off, let's see how long it takes to boot up. I'm kind of curious myself. Uh-oh. Okay, there we it go. It has a little hiccup. It does. <laughs> just like takes a it's split like second <laughs> where your, your heart kind of sinks for that split second, but it looks like it's going. All right, we got a splash screen. Very nice. All right, so it took took us a little while, maybe about a minute there to, to, to actually, actually get to, like fully into the get desktop. up. Yeah, it takes. So, now I forgot to mention this also before, but you're running a 500 gig mechanical hard drive in here. It's the only drive in the system, right? Yeah. Cool. So okay, the task bar is filling up. There we go. <laughs> Icons, success. All right, cool. Semi success, I think. Yeah, for sure. Still down the Absolutely. Um, I think we have an internet connection here, so we can yeah, hop on to sure either one. Take your pick: World of Warcraft or League. All right, so what do we got here? This is World of Warcraft, right? Yeah. I'm not too familiar with the, with the whole MMO scene, but um, <laughs> but this definitely does look like World of Warcraft, and it's looking a little flipbooky. Uh, we haven't even engaged in any kind of battle yet, but we're seeing Just about to six to me. we're seeing about ten frames per second right now uh, using fraps. But uh, <laughs> I think let's try bumping down the settings to, to low, okay. like the lowest possible setting, and, and yeah, see like what the I, most performance you can get out of this. We want to take off any filtering, any any uh, anti-aliasing. And now you can see we are at a steady uh, 78 frames per second, about. All right, and now what is this? Is this a, a, one of those raid yeah, things? Yeah, it's like a raid. So one these guys are going to come out of here and okay, so we're going to try to kill them. Definitely a lot more intensive. Yeah, like it went down. It's dropped significantly. We're at 32 frames per second now. This is the lowest possible setting that you can that you can yeah. put into place. Okay. It's just like dead stop. So we are at zero frames per second. So how would you like to step up your game yeah, like beyond a... zero <laughs> frames per second? <laughs> we're at... Right. I, I would imagine. So I would imagine that this low, this really low FPS is probably attributed to the one gigabyte frame buffer that you have on the the HD sixty seven seventy uh, your video card. It's on a one twenty eight bit bus, but one gig of uh, video RAM isn't typically the best suited for a ten eighty gaming scenario. Uh, you're gonna want at least two gigs for that, which uh, your new card definitely will have. Um, but also, I think the four gigs of memory is also holding you back quite a bit as well. I think we checked it, and you're at about eighty five to ninety percent memory usage. Uh, just playing this game alone with no other applications running, so that could definitely um, also take a turn uh, in in, in uh, gaming performance as well. But this is this is making me kind of nauseous. So I don't yeah, know, I Brent. Out, yeah. Brent, what do you what, what do you think about uh, what if we take a look at all the components that you're going to be uh, putting in this new system, and then uh, we'll we'll get the building. Sounds like more fun than this. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I completely agree. Let's let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Starting off with our CPU, I decided to go with the Intel Core i5-4570. Since Brent doesn't do much overclocking, it made sense to save a few bucks and opt for a non-K SKU. He will, however, still benefit from the processor's 4 cores and 6 megabytes of L3 cache. To house the CPU, I've gone with the MSI Z97 PC Mate, which is a great budget ATX board that sports things like 6 SATA 3 ports, 2 PCIe X16 slots, and gigabit Ethernet. A nice value at just 100 bucks. 
My memory of choice was this 2x4 kit from HyperX's Fury series. 8 gigs is still the unwritten standard for most gaming rigs these days, and HyperX memory has never failed me in the past, so I'm fairly confident this 1866 DDR3 kit will serve Brent quite well. For graphics, we're going with the XFX Radeon R9 280X. The card is known for its effective cooler while staying relatively quiet under load, and having a 3GB frame buffer on a 384-bit interface isn't half bad for a $900 system. To keep our i5 nice and cool, I've chosen the Hyper T4 from Cooler Master. Back in the day, Cooler Master's Hyper 212 earned a reputation of exceptional price to performance, and based on the reviews I'd read from the Hyper T4, it seems like this late successor has what it takes to keep the 212's legacy alive. Now with the fast falling prices of SSDs over the last few years, I really didn't see a reason why we couldn't squeeze one into this $900 rig, so here we have the Mushkin 120GB solid state drive at an impressive 550 and 515 megabytes per second sequential reads and writes. While 120GB should be enough for Windows 8.1 and some frequently used programs, Brent will still need a dedicated drive for his movies, music, pictures, and, most importantly, his games, which is why I've included a 1TB WD Blue hard drive for reliable storage. Powering this system is the XFX XTR series 550 watt power supply. The unit was on sale during my part picking process, and with 80 plus gold certification, hybrid fan control, and a fully modular design, I just couldn't see myself finding a better option at the time. And finally, all the components I've elected for Brent's PC will live inside of this Corsair 200R. Part of Corsair's Carbide series, this case features front panel USB 3, a black painted interior, and workable cable management, making it a killer deal for just 60 USD. After all was said and done, the final cost of Brent's new gaming PC came out to be just under his $900 budget. While I'm pretty happy with all the parts that I picked, I did have two whole dollars that I could have totally utilized to make this system way better. But that's neither here nor there. So at this point, sit back and relax while I build this $900 gaming PC.
right, man. So your new system is all finished. Yeah, the, the build went pretty smooth, actually. I'm yeah. very happy with how it turned out. And I think it looks pretty great, too. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I like the look of it. Yeah. I like a... Uh... The smooth front, and yes. the, the kind of like all black with a little bit of blue. Yeah, absolutely. I try to I try to color coordinate things for you. You know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe one day in the future, if you want to gut the system out and put it into another case that maybe has a side panel window, that way you can kind of appreciate the innards. You know, all the internals and stuff. It matches really nice. I don't know. The video card's a bit intimidating, so I'm not sure I want to look at it. Oh, you definitely got to show it off. <laughs> yeah. So so it in, in, intimidates other people that come oh, into right, your house. Yeah. Like, uh, bow down. <laughs> to you're, you're clearly the boss. Yeah. This this is definitely a bit beefier than your last video card um, to say the least and it should also perform a lot better too uh, speaking of which I say we turn this thing on and, and jump into some games all right sounds good go ahead and do the honors okay and here we go system starts up fans are spinning always a good sign yeah nice and cool you'll you'll also very cool uh, you'll notice that this thing stays a lot cooler and quieter than your last system as well even though there's more fans in it the fans are sp spinning at uh, lower rpms um, and they've also been improved in terms of like their bearings and whatnot uh, and and we're in so that's definitely the courtesy of the SSD working for you um, You'll you'll notice that all your games that you install in that SSD as well are gonna load up super quick compared to the uh, mechanical drive in your last rigs Well first off I don't have World of Warcraft or League of Legends installed on here I actually don't own those games, um, but I did install some other games uh, some other Steam games on here So we're gonna jump into those and actually it might be even a more uh, Representative test because uh, they're more demanding than than either of those games So it'll give us a good idea of what your system's capable of Let's, let's play some Evolve. You okay. down for some Evolve? Yeah. I've been playing some Evolve lately, and it's a it's a really recent AAA title that that came out not too long ago. So it's um it's like right up there with with all the other demanding games. I want to say max settings. We could probably do max settings on Evolve. Okay. When we couldn't even do the lowest possible settings on World of Warcraft yeah. for your old system. So that's that's a huge step up. But let's see if I'm right. All right, so we are in the thick of it now. You've trapped the Kraken officially, and uh, you're just blasting away at him. We're getting about 60 frames per second still, dipping into the 50s, um, barely on the cusp of the 40s. Actually, yeah, we just dipped into the 40s, but I have I have yet to see 30 frames per second. So at the very least, we're talking about 42 to 43 uh, frames per second at the minimum. Average, I would say, even with heavy gameplay, as you're fighting the monster, uh, I would say you're probably getting on average about 60 frames per second. But all in all, I think um, this is pretty indicative of the new kind of performance you can expect to see out of your new system. Um, so I, I'm really glad that that uh, you're you're in much better shape now than you were, and yeah. and hopefully this thing serves you well from from here on out for for many years to come. I'm excited. Yeah, for I'm sure. To it. Brent, thanks a lot for uh, for coming oh, yeah, in. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, and thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it. If you are a fan of System Config, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of this, this web series. And until next time, guys, I'll see you all in the next video.